everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and I'm going to read you an article called How I Tried and Failed to Educate Two Flat Earthers. It was written by Elan, I-L-A-N, Levine, L-E-V-I-N-E. It was put up March 15th, 2017. So here we go. There is a world of insane conspiracy theories out there with people who believe in all sorts of loony things, like a flat earth. The universe is spinning around a stationary earth. All of the moon landings are faked. NASA is some huge spider-like agency feeding lies to the public. The contrails we see from airplanes are actually mists of chemicals being sprayed on us. The World Trade Center buildings were brought down with explosives by our own government etc etc it is closer to us than we think i accidentally engaged one since she is a former former liberal arts student from about five years ago who took one of my courses i did not realize that she was like this until a few days ago when i saw this post to which she responded at first i was not sure if she was just being sarcastic but then i asked her if she was serious Below is the feed, edited to hide identities of her, known as CT2, and the original poster, CT1, on the conversation. I tried to just give clear answers instead of helping them see reality. I evidently became part of the conspiracy. Okay, from here on, it is just straight from the thread with formatting, etc. for a Word document and hiding identities. Also... All of the figures somehow can't make it into ricochet. Enjoy or weep for our nation. Your choice. So, student one. I've learned so much since 2005 when I started discovering the truth about various things. I now know too much. I can see things for what they are without trying. We are under attack in every conceivable way, yet most people don't recognize this clear. Student two. <clears throat> reality is pretty clear to me as well I likewise feel like I know too much the elite don't bother even bother to cover their tracks anymore so many things are so obvious now I can't believe more people don't have their eyes open the professor you think that the earth is not spinning on its north-south axis student two I'm not saying it's one way or the other all I'm saying is that there is no proof that we are spinning NASA has a way of leaving much to our imagination. The Professor. Do you remember our discussions of the Earth-Moon-Sun system and things such as the reason for the seasons, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, etc.? There is so much proof that the Earth is a big ball whose surface we live on, which rotates on its axis approximately once every 24 hours, orbits the Sun approximately once per year, etc., the fact that you can't recall the evidence which we discussed in detail, even in such an elementary course, does not mean that there is no proof. This kind of intellectual laziness to just reject as a conspiracy things that you don't study won't serve, serve you well. As far as I can recall, you are capable of much better than this. If you are really interested in learning about the evidence for this, I will be happy to go over it with you in detail after, after the semester is over. But be forewarned, this will come at some cost to you. You will be assigned homework. Student two says, out of respect for my former professor, I will not argue this with you. However, I do not appreciate being called intellectually lazy. NASA has been a prime target of my personal studies for some time. And what I have found is that they seem to be far from honest with us about the so-called science they conduct. No pictures of Earth released by them are real or undoctored pictures. They disclaim that the pictures are composites or based off artist interpretation. Seems fishy that they can produce no authentic images when they are in control of hundreds of satellites and high-powered telescopes. We, sh we could be stationary and the universe may revolve around us, and what you said would still make sense. I know I have seen videos of NASA astronauts filming from inside giant water tanks and pass it off as filming from space. In others, the women permed their hair so it would stand straight up to give the effect of zero gravity. 
I do not shrug off information out of laziness. I just have questions that there seems to have no answers. Besides, they are trying to hide the true state of things from the general public. NASA controls all the space agent intelligence agencies. It would not be hard for them to devise a plan like this and carry it out all over the Earth and remain unnoticed by the masses. It's not like that many of us have ever seen Earth or space with our own eyes. The professor says, okay. Student one says, I've never seen a video of the spinning Earth from space is all that's being said. Can you provide one or an explanation as to why one doesn't exist? Do you believe we went to the moon in 1969? The professor says, if you really want to explore the evidence, then one factoid spoon fed to you will never satisfy you. If you just want to say it's all made up, hence my offer to student one, who is still local, I believe, people want to believe that anything which is true is immediately apprehended from one photograph and a few words, but understanding how the world works takes patient study. I can recommend an elementary astronomy text if you really want to read about this. Remind me on Thursday when I am relatively free and I will look in my office and find a good text to recommend. Until then, just look at the night sky. Look how all of the stars and the moon and the planets appear to rotate from east to west. That is what a relatively fixed universe looks like to a creature who lives on a ball and looks away from the center of the ball, otherwise known as up. You can do this two ways. Look up every half hour and follow, say, the, Or the Orion constellation or Jupiter tonight. You will see it advancing in snapshots of time. If you are a bit patient, just sit outside for one hour looking at a star near a tree or a building. If you keep staring, you will see the, them getting either further and further away from the tree or closer and closer, depending upon if the tree is on the east horizon or west horizon. That is the principle, the same thing philosophically, but comes closest to seeing a video of spinning. As to the moon landing, I remember it vividly, since I watched it as a young boy, one of my few memories from childhood. It somehow entered my mind that this was my birthday present, since it happened two days before my birthday. Student one says, you thought you watched it on television. What you saw was a show put on by NASA. A television show written and directed and filmed here on Earth. Do you know what the Van Allen radiation belts are? What you watched on TV was impossible to have transpired on the moon with the technology we had. It was a propaganda show. No man could traverse the Van Allen belts and live. Houston, we have a problem. If they are faking the moon landings, what else are they faking? Hint, it's a lot. The professor says, okay. Student one says, dismissive and arrogant deserves no respect. Answer the questions or do some research. He clearly has an interest in perpetrating, I'm sorry, perpetrating, perpet, perpet, whatever, the, the NASA lies since he's employed to indoctrinate young minds to universal lies. He must be aware of the Van Allen belts and chooses to ignore any argument that pokes holes in the junk science portrayal of propagandized events presented as real. This type of academic negligence destroys one faith in the institutions of higher learning. Student one says, explain the Van Allen belts, professor. The professor says, it is a region of space filled with temporary trapped car charged particles, mostly protons and electrons boiled off by the sun, but also from cosmic rays from outside our solar system. They are trapped by the magnetic field of the earth. Student one says, now explain how a human in a tin can can pass through these radioactive fields safely. The professor says, what biological effects there are a person from such an environment depends upon factors including, one, what the flux happens to be at the time, two, how much time one spends in that region, and three, the amount of shielding provided by the spacecraft and probably other things that I have not come up with on the fly. Thus, living in the Van Allen belts might be very bad in terms of long-term exposure, but passing through, say on the way to the moon or Mars, might be okay, depending upon the above factors. 
It is kind of like air crews. The crews who fly at high altitude are exposed to cosmic rays with greater intensity than those of us on Earth who are protected by 20 kilometers of air. So the air, airlines limit the amount of time these crews spend at high altitude. Does this help? Professor also says, by the way, I have a class to teach in 45 minutes, so I will look at any further questions later. Student one says, the effects of passing through the Van Allen belts are fatal, if not shielded from the radiation, and NASA admits in their new Orion preparations as much in their testing. I'll look for your reply later tonight. Enjoy your class, Professor. Professor says, okay, so I watched the edited NASA movie you pointed to me. There is nothing inconsistent with what I said. How dangerous that region is biologically depends on how much time you have people spend there. The more time, the more the radiation damage to people. The Apollo craft moved through this region very quickly to limit this, but I would also not be too surprised if they were more cavalier about the long-term cancer threats back then. Doctors on television still recommended some brands of cigarettes over others, I think. In any case, I think they were much more focused on the whole ship exploding or just not working at some stage, killing the astronauts much more quickly than cancer. This is one of the reasons that astronauts were chosen from the ranks of the test pilots with the right stuff, who are used to taking calculated risks. But biological danger, just going through the Van Allen belt, is not all you have to worry about. There is solar wind throughout the year, uh, which would cause some amount of ionizing radiation when you are not protected by Earth's magnetic field or its atmosphere. So the problem they will have to solve is not just getting through the Van Allen belt, but also minimizing the radiation during the entire trip. Also, Mars does not have any a strong magnetic field, so even when the astronauts are on Mars, they will probably, I'm guessing at this since this is all outside my area of expertise, suffer from enhanced cosmic ray exposure for their entire stay on Mars. Also, since there is very little atmosphere on the planet, they will be exposed to enhanced UV radiation exposure during their stay since the planet has no ozone layer. Finally, on their trip back, they would be exposed to the same biological toll as on the way to Mars. But there's another risk which I thought about based upon the question of the conspiracy theorist who edited the film. Why are they testing these regions if they already tested with Apollo? I think the main reason is that technolog technology today, especially circuits, are tiny surface mount mounted components with integrated circuits. A single highly ionizing particle could go through the wrong component in the wrong place, could kill an entire chip or circuit. So they probably have to build in a lot of redundancy to see if today's extremely compact and light, important for traveling long distances using reasonable amounts of fuel, but more fragile electronics can survive large integrated exposures. This is something which would have not been a problem with the relatively humongous electronic components used in the 1960. I hope this helps. I am not going to bother with the films on faked moon landings. These tend to be basically debunked notions based purely on I don't trust them mentality. I have never seen any even slightly convincing evidence that this was faked. So I don't want to sink hours into watching sh such films. But if you can have a specific question you want to ask, Pete, please feel free. Cheers, Elon Levine. Student one says, thank you for a fantastic response. And by fantastic, I mean based in fantasy. Of course, if one is not willing to view the evidence of the fraud, they can confidently declare that they've never seen anything convincing to the contrary of their position. Fact is that you cannot debunk the documentaries made by committed researchers who have uncovered the fraud without seriously looking at their findings. If you want to be taken seriously, you must confront their findings head on, not skirt evasively around them. Do yourself a favor in restoring any credibility you seek to, to maintain by looking at the evidence presented by those who have concluded the moon landings were a propaganda hoax. Bart uh, uh, obtained unedited raw footage of the video fakery from inside the capsule. capsule. It cannot be disputed, only avoided. The professor says, okay. And the professor closes the article, saying, If anyone thinks that there was a more productive way to have engaged the students, I would like to hear it. Signing off for the night, but we'll read suggestions tomorrow, he said, hopefully. And one other thing I'd like to mention before I close this out, because that's the end of the article, 
anyone that wants to go there, you know, go back to the, the original article, you can post it. There's hundreds of responses already, some pros, some con, but please, by all means, if you're a flat earther, go after this guy and know that here's, here's why science will lose because they don't have the tools to fight this thing with. They, they, they are confined by the rules that they use to try to build the world, the universe that you live in. And he can't, he can't fight out of it, his way out of it. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening. And uh, hey, stay flat.